So here we're gonna look at two trickier inequalities involving absolute values. So let's jump into the first example. We wanna find all values of x that satisfy this. So we have two is less than or equal to the absolute value of three x plus five, which is less than or equal to 10. So this compound inequality can be broken up into uh, two inequalities joined by an and. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. I'm gonna underline this left one in pink and I will underline this right one in yellow and we'll need to work each of those individually. So notice the pink one can be rewritten like this. Absolute value of three X plus five is bigger than or equal to two. So I just changed the order there but nothing else changed. Now the yellow one can be rewritten like this. Absolute value of three X plus five is less than or equal to 10. Great, and now what we wanna do is calculate each of these separately, keeping in mind that we have an and statement between them. Okay, so if absolute value of three X plus five is bigger than or equal to negative, sorry, bigger than or equal to two, that itself splits into two cases. And those two cases are three X plus five is less than or equal to negative two or three X plus five is bigger than or equal to two. So notice if this three X plus five is less than or equal to negative two, like negative three, you take the absolute value and you've got something bigger than two. So that's kind of why that works out. All right, now let's go ahead and solve each of these. We have three X is less than or equal to negative seven, which we get from subtracting five from both sides or 3x is bigger than or equal to negative three, again, from subtracting five from both sides. So now we're gonna get x is less than or equal to negative seven thirds, or x is bigger than or equal to negative one. Okay, good. So now let's maybe box these in pink to say that that is the solution to this pink underlined inequality. Now next, let's work on this one over here. So we've got absolute value of three X plus five less than or equal to 10. So we wanna split this into a compound inequality not involving absolute values, just like we did over here. But now there'll be an and statement between them. But we can smash those together into like a big triple inequality. So here we'll have negative 10 is less than or equal to three X plus five, which is less than or equal to 10. So now we'll subtract five from all parts of this inequality. So that'll give us negative 15 is less than or equal to 3x is less than or equal to 5, which tells us that x is between 5 thirds on the right and negative 3 on the left. Okay, great. So that should be yellow boxed because it comes from the yellow solution up there. Okay, great. So now what I want to do is graph each of these. So if I graph the pink, I'm looking for numbers that are less than or equal to negative seven thirds. So let's maybe go ahead and put negative seven thirds on here or bigger than or equal to negative one. So notice less than or equal to negative seven thirds will be filled in at seven thirds and then shaded to the right. Bigger than or equal to negative one will be filled in at negative one and shaded to the right. I should have said left over here. Good, and now let's look at this one right here. We have negative three to five thirds. So notice that negative three is over here. Negative seven thirds is like a little bit less than negative two. And so that's gonna include negative three and then shade to the right, but it's going to stop at five thirds. So five thirds is like over here maybe. So if we look at the graph of the yellow solution, we get that right there. But now let's recall that we have an and statement between these two that came down from the beginning. So we want to look at everything that is shaded both pink and yellow. So I'll maybe shade that blue. So we'll have this point right here to this point right here. So negative three to negative seven thirds. And then we'll have this negative one up to five thirds as well. So we'll have those two pieces as our final solution. We'd probably like to put that final solution in interval notation, and we can do that with the union of these two intervals. So negative three to negative seven thirds union, negative one up to five thirds. And that would be our final solution for the values of X that satisfy this compound inequality.
So for our next example, we've also got something which is a bit complicated. We've got this nesting of absolute values. So we have the absolute value of the absolute value of x minus one minus five is less than three. So the first thing that we wanna do is unravel this outer absolute value. And we're gonna do that similarly to what we did over here. So this is gonna split off into negative three is less than the absolute value of x minus one minus five, which is less than three. Great, again, using this kind of uh, notion that we did over here. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is add five to all sides of this inequality to get the absolute value by itself. So adding five over here will give us two is less than x minus one in absolute values, which is less than eight. Great. Now we have to split this into two parts just like we did in this last example. So I'll underline this one in this color, then I'll underline this one in this color, and those are gonna be separated into two inequalities with an and statement between them. So here we'll have um, x minus one in absolute values is bigger than two. So that's what we get from this one. I just changed the order of the inequality there. And then what we get from this purple one will be the absolute value of x minus one is less than eight. Now we'll split each of these. So let's work down this uh, left-hand side first. So this means that x minus one is less than negative two or x minus one is bigger than two. So that tells us that x is less than negative one or x is bigger than three. Again, just by simplifying those. So let's see, this is our condition in order for this orange underlined inequality to be satisfied. So now let's go ahead and work on the other side. So this is gonna give us negative eight is less than x minus one, which is less than eight. Again, using the same strategy that we did before, adding one to all sides of the equation here, give us x is less than nine, which is less than negative seven, or I should say negative seven is less than x, which is less than nine. And then this is going to be the inequality that the purple side satisfies. But now we need both of those to be satisfied at the same time. So we need to get a handle on what those two things do together. And we'll do that with a graph again, just like we did over here. So let's go ahead and make our number line. So important points on our number line are going to be uh, negative seven, negative one, uh, three, and nine. Now notice the orange bit is everything less than negative one, so that'll be like an open circle here and everything shaded back, or bigger than three, so there we've got an open circle there and shaded forward. And then the purple stuff will be between negative seven and nine, so that'll be an open circle there and an open circle there, and then everything in between. Great. And so now in the end, what we want is everything with both shading, and that's because we've got this and statement between these two um, inequality groups. So that'll be everything from negative seven to negative one, and then from three to nine. So it'll be everything shaded blue like that. So that might, means our final solution will be this open interval, minus seven, to minus one union, this open interval three to nine. Great. And so that's an interval that represents the solution to this inequality. And that's a good place to stop.